Hello and welcome. In this demo, I want to show you a really cool feature that's in 3.3. Really, really cool feature around uh, pipeline replay. So if you're familiar with pipelines currently in 3.3, pipelines are a way to format data uh, before it goes to an output. That's things like buffering, transforming, etc., processing event-based data. Uh, things that are more beyond just modeling or conditioning of input data, modeling and sending. Pipelines let you do kind of almost ETL like stuff at the edge, right, is, is, is uh, a way to position it. Now we've always had activity of pipelines, so you can kind of track on another page with pagination kind of what's going on, but I'm going to show you a way cooler way to do it in 3.3. So what I have here is I've got a simple flow that's taking, not, not this flow actually, uh, it's taking all the stuff that's coming out of the SQL table which if you go do test read on it and we'll go view it is a bunch of sub processes that all have uh, unique paths <coughs> and it is flowing that to a pipeline so it's, it's taking oops I keep jumping into the wrong one uh, that other flow is the thing I'm using to generate the data but it's it's flowing this into a pipeline if we brought up SQL basically I have the status of these uh, processes or sub processes and there's a path in here and I want to use this path as the topic path and I want to publish this data uh, as the data over in the UNS, right? So I want to kind of inject this into the UNS easily. So I'm, I'm reading the raw data from SQL, then I'm sending it to a pipeline. And I'm sending it to a pipeline that's currently in an error state. So I have gone messed up. Happens all the time. Uh, but basically, so it comes as an array of data for each row in the SQL. So I break that up in an array. I want to do an on change filter. So I want to change, send stuff to the UNS when something in the row has changed. So I'm keeping a key based on the asset ID. And each one of these has a unique asset ID. So it's, it keeps a local cache for each row basically in the pipeline. and <coughs> says if the row changed, I'm going to send it to the UNS. When I send it to the UNS, I'm going to send it out this path. But you can see I'm, I'm in an error state. So it says cannot read property asset ID of undefined. Okay, what does that mean? So now we used to have an activity tab, but now you can jump to replay. And what replay does is it shows you each message that comes into the pipeline and kind of it's how, and how it's processed. So if I click on the latest one, which occurred eight milliseconds ago, how cool is this? So this message came in, I did the query, took a mil, less than a millisecond to break up the array into multiple objects. In this case, there's 10 rows, so you could look at each object. Each one of those rows failed because in here, at this stage, I'm using an asset ID that's undefined. Well, that's silly. So let me jump in and look at what I did. I used the wrong syntax, right? What you actually wanted, I actually wanted to do here is event.value.assetID. <coughs> and I'm going to save that. I'm going to clear my refresh class, my history. Uh, let's go back to the pipeline. Turn on the flow. So we're injecting data into the pipeline. It looks good, right? So again, I can hit replay and I can go into any one of these events and see, okay, I can look at the time it took, right? Uh, the on change calculation took on average a millisecond. So that, that broke up, this 10 events came out of the breakup array and each one took about a millisecond to process. And you can see my longest time was the actual writes out over to MQTT, which took 37 milliseconds. And if I go look at my UNS, how, how cool is this? This makes me smile, right? Like I've kind of blown out that namespace and I can look at updates on each one of these objects and I should only be, it should only be publishing if there's data changing. I don't think I have any changing data in here. Oh wait, no there is, the timestamp is changing. So that's kind of weird because that's an internal field. I could go in and on change filter and actually filter out, oops, exit the replay. Uh, and I think it, on change has a way. <coughs> I think it's on change. Only change data, and I could use an inclusion list or next. Anyway, I could go. I could go change that. I could remove that field and stop it from updating on timestamp. But either way, uh, the purpose of this is to show you the replay fe feature, which is really cool, right? Well, I think we store up to 100 events by default that come into the pipeline. You can see exactly where they failed. You can drill in and see the error. Uh, you can even see the configuration at the time of error. So if there are configuration changes, I can go back and say, hey, how was this thing configured at the time there was an error stage? There's other cool stuff in here, like if I exit out of replay, um, 
you know, there's new stage statistics, so you can look at the number of queued writes coming into the pipeline, the number of total runs, execution times, all that's in there. And even when we jumped into the replay, you know, if you want to look at um, the stats for the stages, you can see, you know, the one run, zero errors, execution time was less than a millisecond, so you can start to see where in the pipeline things are slow. You know, at statistics level, you can see our events building in the pipeline. Really cool feature orders of magnitude better than what we had in before to kind of debug pipelines really starting to set us up for centering around kind of this pipeline experience and taking simple flows and representing those easily in pipelines uh, and giving you a visual way to kind of see and manipulate your data flow so really excited for this feature give it a shot it should save you time and troubleshooting